Um, this segment is going to be about text similarity. Uh, text similarity is one of the most uh, important applications of uh, linguistics and statistics to natural language processing and it helps in many different applications. Uh, there are many ways in which people can express the same concept or related concepts. For example, we can say the plane leaves at 12 p.m., but we can also say the flight departs at noon. Uh, except for the words like the and at, uh, the rest of the words in the sentences are very different, and yet they express the exact same meaning. As I mentioned earlier, text similarity is one of the key components of natural language processing. For example, in an information retrieval task, if the user is looking for information about cats, we may want the system to return documents that mention the word kittens and not the word cat. So the document may not have any words in common with the query and still be related because cat and kitten are similar words. Another example is if the user is looking for information about a fruit dessert, we may want the NLP system to return documents about peach tarts or apple cobblers. In each of those examples, we have a specific fruit and a specific dessert, but both of those um, items are special cases of fruit dessert. Another example is about a speech recognition system. Uh, for example, if I want to fly to Dulles Airport, Sometimes the system may hear me incorrectly and figure out that I want to go to Dallas and it may book me on the wrong flight. However, if a system knows in advance that Dulles and Dallas are, uh, sound very similar, it may uh, tweak its algorithm so that if it picks up one of those two, it may ask me to confirm if I didn't mean the other one. It doesn't need to do this uh, for uh, names of cities that are not so similar. So, for example, if I ask about Dulles, it's never going to ask me, do you really mean San Francisco? So uh, in this segment of this lecture, I'm going to teach you how text similarity can be modeled computationally. Let's start first with some human judgments of similarity. I'm showing you here an example from a paper by uh, Finkelstein et al. from 2002, where they asked people uh, to determine how similar two words are. So they gave them words like tiger and tiger, and obviously they got the maximum similarity score from the human judges, in this case 10 out of 10. Then they gave them tiger and cat, and they got a similarity of an average of 7.35. Book and paper had a similarity of about the same range. Computer and keyboard, also about 7.5. Now some other examples. Plane and car had a similarity of 5.7. Cucumber and potato had a similarity of 5.92. One interesting thing is that the variance of those scores was actually pretty high, so uh, clearly there was not much uh, user agreement uh, whether uh, certain two words are very similar or less similar, but they still agreed uh, generally uh, about the overall level of similarity. So one uh, other example is from a more recent paper. It was just published in 2014 by uh, Felix Hill et al. It has a much larger uh, data set with 999 words, uh, all uh, kinds of parts of speech, including adjectives, verbs, nouns, and adverbs. Uh, for example, they figure that delightful and wonderful are very similar, uh, with a similarity of 8.65 out of 10, whereas modest and flexible were not similar at all, their similarity being only 0 0.93. You can look at some of the examples on the slide, uh, just stop at one of them. Argue and persuade were moderately related, 6.33 similarity versus pursue and persuade, which had a much lower similarity of 3.17. So this kind of data sets can be used to train uh, natural language systems, and they can also be used to evaluate systems that automatically compute uh, text similarity. Uh, one more recent example is uh, by Mikolov et al. in a paper published in 2013. Uh, he uses uh, the word to vec approach, uh, which I'm going to talk about later. And he was able to compute automatically uh, the words that are most similar to France based on the context in which they appear. And those words are shown in the table. So uh, not surprisingly, the words that are most similar to France are countries that are near France geographically. Uh, Spain, Belgium, the Netherlands, Italy, Switzerland, and so on. Now, let me describe the different kinds of text similarity that exist. The first kind is uh, morphological similarity. We have two words such as respect and respectful that have the same stem, 
but then they have uh, some additional morphological uh, change. In this particular example, the word respectful is an adjective derived from respect, and the suffix full uh, tells us that it's an adjective. But the two words are morphologically very similar. They share pretty much the same meaning. The next example is spelling similarity. It can be useful, for example, in dealing with different versions of, or dialects of English, for example, in uh, British and American English. The word theater can be spelled either with an ER at the end or RE. So we want a system uh, to understand that those are uh, pretty much the same word because they look very similar and they follow a very specific pattern of changes that appears across those languages. Synonymy is when two words have a very similar meanings. It's very rare for two words to have exactly the same meaning, but it is usually enough for them to be close enough uh, to be considered synonyms. So talkative and chatty are synonyms. Another category of similarity in text is homophony. That's when you have multiple words that have possibly different meanings, but have uh, the same uh, pronunciation. So raise, R-A-I-S-E, raise, R-A-Z-E, and also raise as R-A-Y-S. All of those are pronounced the same way. We can also have different kinds of semantic similarity. For example, cat and tabby are semantically related because the word tabby is usually uh, used to refer to a specific kind of cat, specific color cat. There can also be similarities among sentences. For example, two sentences may paraphrase each other. And we can have also similarity at the level of documents. For example, two news stories reported independently on the same event will often have uh, very similar content. And I would also like to add an additional example of similarity, that namely cross-lingual similarity. For example, uh, the word uh, for Japan in uh, Japanese is Nihon. So sometimes the name of an organization may be translated Nihon or Japan, depending on who does the translation. And we want to be able to identify that those refer to the same country. So uh, in the next segment, we're going to talk specifically about morphological similarity and stemming.